This lesson is about atomic spectra. That'll be the topic. My students should write that down. And write down this question and answer. So the issue is why do we care what about atomic spectra? Why are we talking about this? And what it does for us is it helps us identify elements, and we can even do it at a very long distance. Uh, so I'll explain how it works, then we'll talk about how we use it to identify different elements in different places. So white light from the sun, as we usually look at, uh, if we put it through a prism, we're going to get a nice continuous spectrum. You see all the colors, there's no blank spaces in between the colors on that rainbow in the picture. Uh, so you see there's no black lines in between. There, uh, all the colors, all the frequencies or wavelengths are all there. There's nothing missing. Write this down also. And if you're one of my students watching this, you should pause it each time so you can write down what's in the uh, sections. This one, you should have this written down. Okay, so next we have uh, light given off from something other than the sun, so from an element or a compound, uh, doesn't give off all the frequencies or all the colors. So you're not going to have a continuous spectrum. Instead, your rainbow is just going to be a few thin lines, and some colors may not be represented at all. Uh, my students should write all of this down. And as soon as you're done writing this down, we'll go on to the next slide. Uh, you can pause it here if you're not finished. So here's the difference. Let's take a look at the top. The very top is the uh, is, is white light coming from the sun. And so run through a prism, we get all the colors, a nice continuous rainbow. The second line here, I'll put the arrow on it. So the first one is this one here. That's the uh, sunlight. The second line this is light from burning sodium. So if we took sodium metal and threw it in water, like the explosion, um, that's uh, video 311B if you want to watch the sodium explosion. Uh, if we looked at that through a prism, we would see just these couple lines of green, these couple lines of yellow and orange. No other colors would be present. If we burned hydrogen, we would see these couple lines of blue, this one line of green, this one line of red. Each element has its own individual atomic spectra. And why that's important is this. If we know what the spectra looks like for any particular element, and then we're watching something give off light, whether it's burning or uh, if it's in a light bulb and being heated up through electricity, uh, we can tell which elements are in there by looking up the atomic spectra and seeing which ones they match. This is also how we can tell from far away. Like you're watching the History Channel or something, and you see the universe where they say, you know, some other planet or moon has a lot of ammonia on it. And you're like, well, how do they know it has ammonia if we haven't been there? Well, if you're looking at it through a telescope, you can run that light through a spectrometer, just basically a prism, and then a little, uh, basically a plate with a bunch of markings that say 300, 400, 500, 600, and you can look at what the wavelength is for each of those frequencies that comes out of the prism, each of those colors. And you can say, okay, this matches up with calcium or magnesium. So you can tell what elements or what compounds are on those planets far away, even if you're not actually there. So that's why how we use atomic spectra to detect different elements. So next, what we're going to do is we're going to go over uh, how the atomic spectra work. So uh, hopefully this will work on my home computer here. Um, so you imagine a, a, an atom and it has an electron. This is a hydrogen atom. And that electron is in its lowest energy state. And if you were to, say, uh, heat up the hydrogen by burning it, um, or if you had it in a vacuum tube or in a, in a tube and there's just hydrogen, maybe you could run electricity through it. It might give off light. I'm not sure if hydrogen does. Uh, what would happen is um, the electron will get excited and will move up to the highest energy level. And then... Uh, let me go down for a second here. And so here we go, the next slide. You see it's the highest energy level. And then it very quickly falls back down. And when it's at the highest energy level, uh, the outermost electron shell, uh, it has more potential energy because if the electron is attracted, oops, let me go back. The electron is attracted to the proton at the center. And because it's far away, it has a lot of potential energy. And I just changed slides by accident. So let me go back here and find the right slide. Uh, Okay, so it has a lot of potential energy, and then when it falls back down to the lowest energy level, it loses that energy, and where the energy goes is it turns into a photon of light. Okay, so the electron falls down to the lowest energy level, it gives off a photon of light, 
then the energy of that photon, that wave, if you want to call it that, is the difference between the energy at the very uh, outermost shell and the very lowest shell. And that's different for every atom. And that's why each atom has different atomic spectra. Okay. So the energy is, as I just said, the difference between the outermost shell, or whichever shell it jumps up to, and then whichever shell the electron falls down to. Uh, if you're one of my students, you should pause it here and write this down. Okay, for this slide, I, uh, for my students, I only want you to write the first bullet. So what, this, what I'm telling you here is, if we know the energy of the photon given off, then we can find out the frequency using the equation E equals HF, and then as you know, we can also find the wavelength. In this case, we had a hydrogen atom, the electron went up to the seventh shell, and then dropped down to the lowest first shell, and that would give us uh, a wavelength of 121 nanometers, which turns out to be ultraviolet light. If it had jumped up to a different energy level or fallen down to a different energy level, we would get different light. Let's look at one more example of this before we go on. Okay, here we have a lithium atom, and our electron is on the second shell. And if we were to, say, burn this lithium, we could do that by throwing it into some water and it would ignite. It would give off some light, and, if we, and then the electron in the outer shell would then jump up to the highest shell, to the seventh shell. And it could be the sixth or the fifth. You know, you, that's why you get different spectra, because the electrons can jump up or down to different uh, energy electron shells. So it jumps up to the highest shell and then falls back down to the second shell, and we get a photon given off. And in this example, it's going to have a wavelength of 397 uh, nanometers, which is a longer wavelength, which means a lower energy wave. And so this one is in the visible spectrum. This would actually be blue light, right on the very edge of what we can see just before ultraviolet light. So, in short, uh, each, each electron shell, right, uh, where am I going with this? I seem to have lost my chain, train of thought. So the shells are different in each atom uh, because there's a different number of protons in the nucleus, and there's also a different number of electrons in the way shielding the nucleus, so you're going to have a different attraction to the center. And so you're going to end up with different amounts of energy given off when electrons fall back down from a higher shell to a lower shell. So that's why you get these different spectra for every uh, element. So every element's going to have its own atomic spectra, uh, my students should write all this down. And let's go on to the next slide. Here's a few more examples here. Xenon, barium, and strontium. For the xenon, that's a gas. What you would do is you would put it in a tube. You would run electricity through it like a neon sign, which basically is what this is. And then you would look at that light through a spectrometer. The metals, you could simply, uh, these two probably, you could just light them on fire. Or you could uh, take a metal salt and put it over top of the fire and do a flame test. <laughs> So that is the end of this lesson. Uh, the PowerPoint and the worksheet will both be in the comments section of this video. Thank you.